Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or whenever you're accessing this particular video. This is Miss Dewey's Writing Class 2020, Lesson 7, Echo Glen School Pandemic Version. So the basics, again, if you've seen any of my videos, you've heard this and you're going to hear it again. Here we go. What is going on today? What do I need to have to participate? So due to COVID-19 pandemic and the closing of Washington schools until the end of the academic year, Issaquah cool School District and Echo Glen have moved to an online learning platform. In writing class, we will be working on various aspects of writing. What do you need, you right now need to have to participate? You need to have a pencil and a piece of blank paper. That is all you physically need to have with you. A pencil and a piece of blank paper. If you do not have that at this time, please raise your hand and let staff know that you would require those so we can move forward. You also have to have that willingness to learn and to persevere and to grow. So hopefully you're ready to go and here we go with lesson seven, writing class. The warm up, it's part two. So at the very beginning of every single writing class and reading class, we are going to do a warm up. Step one is figurative and literary devices, homophones and spelling. Step two is application of figurative and literary devices, editing, defining grammatical terms. Step three is application of grammatical term, vocabulary practice, spelling practice. And step four is using vocabulary in context, editing, Greek and Latin roots. So that paper that you have right there in front of you with your pencil, what I want you to do at the very tippy top is write your name and cottage, the date, class and lesson number, the class is writing class, lesson number seven, and the question set number, which is the warm up set number, which you'll see on the very next slide, which is number three. So here we go. Do the best that you can. Some of you may have already know these answers, and this can either be review or new learned information. So on that blank sheet of paper, which should not be so blank anymore, because it should have your name and cottage, the date you watch this video, the class and lesson number, so it's writing class, lesson seven, and the set number, which is number three. So what I want you to do is write down the pronouns in the following sentence. Johnny turned off the light after he left the room. Number two, write down the word that means to create chaos. What is the word? Exacerbate, havoc, or desperate. And number three, write the word achieve three times. I'm going to put this slide back up again, so don't panic. You don't have your piece of paper and your pencil. Now is it the last time you should be asking for it. Make sure you have them ready to go with your name and cottage, the date, the lesson, the class, writing class, lesson seven, and the set number, which is number three. Take about two to three minutes to complete these answers. Here's the slide again. And if Staff could please pause the video so everybody can see this slide in its entirety. Give everybody about two minutes, three minutes to finish. Okay, moving on. So here are our answers. So let's see how you did. So if you wrote down the pronouns, you should have wrote down on your piece of paper, he. That was all you needed to write was he. The word that means to create chaos is havoc. Havoc. And write the word achieve three times. Achieve, achieve, achieve. So part three, examples and explanations. This is based on the, the, the warm up that we do. And sometimes I will go into more depth around certain concepts and do, use this as kind of a review section as well. 
So havoc, definition of havoc, it's a noun, as a noun, it's widespread destruction. And as a verb is lay waste to or devastate. So here's a sentence example. He remained content to leave such criminal havoc in the hands of the police. Such criminal havoc in the hands of the police. Usually you will hear the word havoc. They wreaked havoc. Or he wreaked havoc or she wreaked havoc. It usually you, you'll see that those two together a lot. Kind of a lay waste to and destruction. So pronoun, here's another one. I've put this up before, but um, this is a little simplified chart. So we've talked about subjective and objective pronouns in previous lessons. So subjective, meaning you are the, that is the subject of a sentence, would be I, we, you, he, she, they. Objective, the object of a sentence, would be me, us, you, him, her, them. And possessive, meaning to own, mine, ours, yours, his, hers, theirs. So you'll see in the sentence up, up tippy top, I, which would be the subjective, have known him, he's the object, for a long time. That's part of the predicate of the sentence. The subject of the sentence is I. I've known him for a long time. The predicate. So him would be an object in this case, even though it's a person. Okay, so on the next slide, there will be a video explaining pronouns. It's just a quick review oversight about pronouns. It's called, What is a Pronoun? by the Khan Academy. Sorry, technical difficulties and try that again. Hello, grammarians. We're going to start talking about pronouns today. And of course, that begins with the question, what are pronouns? Allow me to answer that question by way of a demonstration. Emma laughed so hard, milk came out of Emma's nose. Zack lifted the log. Zack found a worm under the log. So these sentences don't have pronouns, but what they do have is repeated nouns. You know, we have Emma, and then we say Emma's again, and then we say Zack and the log, and then we say Zack and the log. But people are smart, right? We have relatively long attention spans, and so if we start off a sentence talking about Emma, and we're pretty sure that we're still talking about Emma, we don't need to say that name twice. We don't need to say Emma and then Emma again. So what a pronoun does is it allows you to take out the unnecessary noun. When, we already, when we're very certain we know what we're talking about, so you don't have to say Emma a million times, uh, you can replace Emma with her. Same thing applies to the second two sentences. We don't have to keep on mentioning Zach and the log when we know what we're talking about. So the first sentence would still read, Zach lifted the log. But then in the second sentence, we can replace the name Zach, since we already know who we're talking about, with the word he. And we can replace this little phrase, the log, with it, since we know we're talking about the log. Now words like her and he and it are all pronouns. So what are pronouns? They are words that stand in for other words. Now obviously her, he, and it are not the only pronouns in English, but for now I just want you to think about the idea that a pronoun is a word that stands in for another word. You can learn anything. David out. Okay, so we're going to stop here on um, Lesson 7, Part A. We'll take it up and we'll start on Part to Seats for Lesson 7, Part B. So join me back for Lesson 7, Part B.